before we start, we just want to say that we do not own the rights. Good morning. Before we start, we just want to say that we do not own the rights to the music in the background. Uh, please prepare your minds and your spirits for uh, prayer this morning. Um, first of all, Lord, we just want to thank you for uh, life, health, and strength, because we know that with life we have a choice, a choice to live out your way and live out, live through your word and touch other people's lives. We want to thank you for health because that gives us another chance at life and another chance to live another day. And with strength, we, uh, we have the chance to fight against the enemy who comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Lord, I want to thank you for dying on the cross because you took the choice to end your life and give us life eternally. Uh, God, we also thank you for always being able to communicate with you, no matter how far back we've backslid, no matter where we are, what time it is, you're always there, willing and able to talk to us uh, and communicate with us. God, we want to thank you for your grace because we know that in life, justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. And grace, above all else, is when you get what you don't deserve. And God, we just ask that you always give us more grace over our life, especially in these trying times of a pandemic and during civil unrest in the United States of America. God, we pray for our leaders in the country that they make the choices that you give them in order to bring us all together on one accord. God, we thank you that even done in these trying times that these things may not be sent by you, but they are used by you in order to bring us together. God, we thank even though many people are experiencing pain, we let pain in your presence become the purpose. Whether it be a purpose for us to go higher or a purpose for us to stay where we are, we thank you for it. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to church service this morning. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to continue on with confessions first. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord to honor him, to show as a sign of submission that you submit everything to him today. You submit your life to him today. You submit, submit your family to him today. You submit your thoughts to him today, your actions and everything you will do today. You want to submit it to the Lord and we humble ourselves, oh God, under your mighty hand. Lord, you are able to save our souls from destruction. You are able to bring us out from the miry clay. God, you are able to heal us where it hurts. God, you are able to turn everything around. You are able, God. To make every cricket play straight, God, we give you honor. We give you praise and I lift the hands as a sign that we surrender, God, all to you, Lord. We surrender our life to you, God. We surrender our plans to you, God. We surrender our way to you, God. There's no one like you, Lord, in all of the heavens and the earth. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, God. God is good, and his mercy endures forever, God. We just give you praise, God. We give you honor, God. We thank you that you woke us up this morning, God. We thank you, God, that we're able to rise up and have use of our limbs, use our body on our own, God. We thank you that there's yet still breath in these bodies of ours. We thank you that the angels of the Lord watched over us all night, protected us, and kept around about us, protected us from the onslaught of the enemy. Because you see, the enemy, the devil, Satan, desires to sift you and me like we. Hallelujah. He want us destroyed in the name of Jesus. But the devil is a liar. He's a defeated foe. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. For our righteousness is of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're more than enough. I pray for every pastor that was standing in the pulpit this morning, wherever that pulpit may be. It may be in a parking lot. It may be coming on social media. It may be out in front of the church, in the churchyard. Pastor, I'm praying for you. We pray that God's peace 
peace rest on you right now that the spirit of the living God consume you in the name of Jesus God rest on their tongue give them the words to say God renew their strength give them the energy God let them know that it is not over God no matter what it looks like seems like or sound like God give them the strength God to go on another day to give another word from you to keep their hope and faith in you God we pray for your protection for the pastors and their congregation we pray, oh God, that the people are energetic and they've been revived again, that they're in the word, God, that they don't lose sight of who you are, even though they may not be in their facility as they have been and for those people who've gone back to the facility. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your protection all around them, God. We bind any manner of sickness and disease. We bind that coronavirus, the flu, pneumonia, coughing, whatever it may be, we bind it and render it inoperable and ineffective in their life. We declare that their immune system is strong in the name of Jesus. Their white blood cell counts are where they should be. Blood pressure is normal. Glucose levels are normal. Yes. Their strength has been renewed like that of the eagles. And God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you thanks. Yes. For you alone are the one true living God. Yes. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We have to rejoice and be glad in Because God gave us this day. It is a gift. A free gift. Now what are you going to do with it? Hallelujah. What are you going to do with the day? Are you just going to sit in the house? Are you going to moan and complain? Or are you going to give him praise? praise no Lord. matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like. You are still here, so God still has a purpose and a plan for you. Oh, you God. have not fulfilled the plan. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You. Father, I want to pray for those people who are out protesting God. I even want to pray for those who seem to be just destroying everything because of their anger, God. I ask that you put peace in their heart, Lord. I ask that you give them a calmness, that your peace fall fresh on them right now in the name of Jesus. So I lift my hands, oh God. Hallelujah. And I thank you right now that you're speaking through their minds, God. That you get inside of their hearts and you remove that evil place, God. I ask that your kingdom come, your will be done, oh God. Concerning every case and every person that's been affected by these killings, these murders. God, fall fresh on those families this morning. Holy Spirit, go to them now, comfort them, and keep them, God. I don't understand. I've never been any through anything like that, God. But you know how they feel, oh God. Because you watch your only begotten son be mocked, spat upon, beaten, accused of something he did not do, God. You watch him, God, carry his own cross. Hallelujah. You watch him, God, be nailed in his hands. And nailed in his feet, God, for something he didn't do. But he did not. Hallelujah. Get down off that cross. He stayed there from the sixth to the ninth hour. God, you know what the mothers and the fathers and the family members feel like. God, let them know that everything is going to be all right. That justice will be served. That you got them in the name of Jesus. Give them peace, God. Your word says that you will give us peace which surpasses all understanding. No one will understand the peace that you got. Strengthen them, God, in their minds, in their bodies right now, God. Holy Spirit, hold them. Comfort them. Kiss them. Love on them like never before. God, show yourself strong in their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just forever thank you and give you praise. We love you. We love you. We love you, God. If I had tens of thousands of tongues, God, I couldn't say it enough how I love you, God. I love you for who you are. El Shaddai. El El Yom. Jehovah Nisi. Hallelujah. My recompense of reward. You are my everything. My Lord and my master, God. 
the one who got me up, the one who gives me breath, the one who keeps me going when I'm even knocked down. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. I want to do this generational confession, and I want you to repeat after me. So let's set our hearts ready. Not only repeat it after me, I want you to believe what you're saying. I want you to believe God for what you're saying, not me. I don't have that kind of power. I have to believe it for myself. You know, if you say something enough and you meditate it on long enough, that you will begin to believe in the name of Jesus. So here we go. Father, I thank you that the blessings of the Lord has made me rich and you add no sorrow with it. I am rich in my family, rich in my marriage, rich in my attitude, rich in my body, rich in all of my financial affairs. I thank you, Father, that my children are blessed of the Lord. Your word declares that the seed of the righteous is delivered. And I am the righteousness of Almighty God through Christ Jesus. Let's stop right there. You're the righteousness of Almighty God. That means you're in right standing with the Father because of what Jesus did. See, God, when Jesus paid the price. He stayed there on the cross. He could have at any time called the angels down. Hallelujah. He could have ended it all. But he was obedient to the Father unto death. But I thank you, Lord, that on the third day, he rose up with all power. When he rose, we rose. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare that every generational curse is broken over our families, over our lives, over our children. From to a thousandth generation. God, we just forever praise you. We thank you, Lord, that our families are blessed, they're balanced, they're bold, and they're believing in you, God. We believe that your word is true. You always come through. Hallelujah. Even when we don't do right, God always come through. Hallelujah. There's a song that says he may not come when you want him, but he's always Right on time. See, he, it's just like we do with our children. They ask us for things, and we don't give it to them immediately all the time. We give it to them when we feel like they need it, when we know that they're ready for it. God is the same way. So, God, we just, as I close out, I want to give you honor again. I want to give you praise. I want to thank you for giving me a voice that can praise you. I want to thank you for giving me hands that I can lift up to you. I want to thank you, God. And I ask before the man of God comes up, oh Lord, that you anoint his mind, anoint his mouth, anoint his heart, so he will give us what you've given to him to give us. Prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the incorruptible seed. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Facebook family. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Ah, a couple of announcements. First of all, I do want to welcome you again for joining us this morning. Hallelujah, because this is the day. This is an awesome day in the Lord. Know that the Lord loves you. Uh, thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. Uh, for our service, ask that you just keep us lifted up in prayer as we continue to lift you up in prayer. Amen, amen. Um, I don't think I have no announcements, but I do got something I want to say before I go into my message this morning. Um, I am disheartened by what I'm seeing in America. We know that this land has not always been equal. There's not always been equal justice. But however, protesting is one thing. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and everybody that marched with him protested. They didn't destroy. They protested. They hindered businesses by boycotting. 
what I'm watching around this country is not protest from everybody. And I pray to God that his children, his, those that say they're Christians, are not out here destroying things, burning up things. I said, it's sad, yes. Greg Floyd died. He died wrong. But we got to let justice prevail. George Gregory Floyd. So one thing we got to know is, is that we got to stand together. Because what are some protests that I've seen, it's not all black people. It's white, black, Hispanic Straight, gay, it doesn't matter. They're standing together. And I pray that this young brother's life, I'm saying young brother because he was younger than me, is not in vain. So let's stand, let's pray together. Because not all white people are bad and not all black people are bad. Not all Spanish people are bad. There's bad in every culture. There's bad in every race. But those of us who believe, we got to set the course of how to do things righteously. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's, let's move to the word for today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We esteem you how we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Lord God, I thank you this morning that you increase as I decrease all of you and none of me. Have your way with us today, Lord. Lead God and direct us as you will see fit. Lord God, I pray that every eye is anointed and open to see what the word of God will show us today. Every ear is anointed to hear what the word will speak to us today. And every heart is prepared like that a good soul, ready to receive a seed of the word. That seed will be planted, rooted, and grounded. That seed will die and produce a root, that produce a plant. That produce a tree, that produce heart, that produce fruit, that will last from one generation to the next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, lift them up this morning. Say this after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I, can do what it says I, can do. I declare, I declare my, Bible my Bible is the living word of the living God. It has the power. And the, and the authority to change my life. Change my, life. my life, my life won't, be won't be the same in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, you know, uh, last week I was talking about now. Talking about being in that now moment, in that present time, at this present time. And a lot of times we want our lives to change, but we got to realize that in order for something to change, there has to take place a change in you. There has to be a change in you. Many times we just want to pray and ask God. We want to name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. But no change has taken place in us. So change has to occur in order for change to occur. Y'all follow me on that? You have to something, you have to do something different if you want change to take place in your life. If you want things in your life to get better, you have to do something different. Go with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter. New Testament, Matthew, the sixth chapter. Good morning, Grandma. I love you. Just had to get that in now. Hallelujah. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Oops, I went past it, y'all. When you have that, go down to verse number 25. Matthew 6, verse number 25. And it reads like this. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, 
nor yet for your body. What shall ye put on? Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bars. Yet your heavenly Father, hallelujah, feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed or fashioned like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, what she, what, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thoughts, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now Jesus talking to his disciples, telling them not to have worry, not to be concerned with what they're going to put on, not to be concerned with what they're going to eat. He said, if God take care of the birds of the field, what make you think he's not going to feed you? If God clothes the lilies of the field, if God clothes the flowers, everything, the wheat, what grows in the field, what make you think he won't provide clothes that you need? Not what you want, but what you need. But my, I want to go down to verse number 33. Verse 33. And it reads like this. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to talk today for a subject of kingdom mindset. Kingdom mindset. If you're gonna have a, if you want to declare that you're a king or a queen, you need to have dominion over something and the right mindset or the right attitude. You need to have a kingdom mindset so that you can understand one, who you are, two, whose you are, three, and what power and ability, what authority you have on this earth. You got to have a kingdom mindset. And you have to develop your kingdom mindset. Because if you are part of this world, you grew up with this world's mindset. And now that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you have the Holy Spirit of God because you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's in you and upon you. Now your mindset has to be renewed, has to be changed so that you can have dominion. You got to do that. That's why, you know, I, I, I love verse 33 because Jesus tells us to do what today? But seek. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first God's way of doing business, God's way of doing things, God's way of ruling his kingdom. Because he gave the world to man, but we have to take our rightful place in this earth as sons and daughters of the Most High God, and we have to develop a kingdom mindset. Now, the mindset you have today, I don't know what it is because I don't know your mind, but you do. But I can tell you this. That if you're in the word of God constantly, that your mind is being renewed and you are developing a kingdom mentality. But there may be a war going on inside of you. Because part of you want to do what? Enjoy the world a whole lot more than what you want to do enjoying God. See, a lot of times we probably wonder why we don't get this promotion. Why we don't have this or obey? Why we don't have that? Part of the problem could be is that your mindset is all wrong. 
Because you're not seeking after God, you're seeking after the things of God, you're seeking after the things that are in the hand of God, instead of embracing God himself for yourself. You have to develop a kingdom mindset. We know that Romans 12 and 2 tells us what? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, be changed by the what? Renewing of your mind. So every day you have to renew your mind with the word. Why? Because there are things in this earth, in this world, that's going to come at you, and not all of it is physical and fleshly. A lot of it is spiritual, but if you don't have a kingdom mindset, you're going to try to deal with these spiritual attacks according to the world's way of doing things, and it's not going to work. So you have to develop a kingdom mindset. You got to recognize who you are and whose you are. Because we know Genesis 1, 26 tells us what? God said, let us make man in what? In whose image? He said, our image. He said, let us make man in our image. And let them have what? Dominion. See, God has given you a kingdom to rule over, but if your mindset is not right, you will never ever rule the way God intended for you to rule. See, a lot of times we trying to do what what what, what we saw mama and daddy did, and that don't work for us. Because maybe mom and daddy didn't have the type of education that you have when it comes to the world or better when it comes to, to the Bible. They didn't hear the word the same way you in it. So you got to do what? Seek God for yourself. You got to know God for yourself. And this is why if you want a kingdom mindset, you have to guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. You ever want to see what kind of problems people have? Just stand back long enough. Listen to their conversation. Watch what they do. Watch how they respond when somebody say something to them. Watch their facial expression. Watch their whole body position. It'll tell you a lot about a person. But to somebody, in the midst of a storm, they still smiling. They still looking up. They're still talking positive. That person has a kingdom mindset and they know that Jesus said, let us go to the other side. They understand, yes, this light affliction is but for a moment. They understand that I am victorious. I am a child of the most high God. And I'm not taking no thought for what's going to happen on the other side because I already know God has given me victory. I already recognize that God is going to bring me out. He brought me to it. He's leading me through it. He's bringing me out of it. So you have to develop a kingdom mindset. And in developing a kingdom mindset, you have to spend time with the word of God. You have to spend time with God. You have to be in God and let God be in you. And I'm not talking about part time. See, that could be part of our issue too. We want to be like Stevie Wonder. We want God to be a part-time lover on a full-time basis. And God don't operate like that. You can't have nothing else, no other God before God. God has to be first before everything in your life. But if you want to put Lottie Dottie and everybody first, then when you're going through, see if Lottie Dottie and everybody going to help you. But no, see, you want everybody to call and pray and stand in the gap that when the Holy Spirit been talking to you, but you've been ignoring him. You've been giving him your butt to kiss. And now all of a sudden, you want to snuggle up and be all intimate with the Lord. But your mindset is one of trickery, of usury. You're trying to pimp God. And that's not going to work. You can't pimp God. 
If you want God's best, give God your best. Don't give him that little, uh, uh, I'm tired, pray. Thank you, Lord. You ain't spent no time with him. You want to develop a, a, a kingdom mindset, you have to make an investment. You have to set aside time to read your Bible. You got to set aside time to pray. You got to set aside time to study. You got to set aside time to confess. You got to set aside time every day for God. Some of us got more time with Facebook posts than we have with the Lord. We're on Instagram and Twitter. We know everything that happened on there, but as soon as somebody asks you, what does the word say? You stumble. But you're a child of the Most High God. And see, I can say I know that God has something in store for you, but the question is, will you do what it takes to get the reward that God has for you? Will you develop a mindset that when trouble comes, you can stand still, you can stand flat-footed and, and say, you know what? I will not be moved. Why? Because God got this. Go with me to Psalms 82 and 6. Let me show you something in the Word right here. Psalms 82. I want to read this one verse. Actually, maybe a couple. Psalm of Asaph. I hear you all the ghosts. Look at what it says in Psalm 82 and 6. It says, I have said, ye are gods, and, uh, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking to the children of God. He's talking to the sons and the daughters of God about what God has said about them. Telling them that you are, you are gods. When God made man in his image, he didn't make them in the image of angels. He made us in the image of God. Like, for instance, my name is James. My daddy's name is James. Some people, when I grew up, some people refer to me as Little James. Why? Because my daddy was Big James. So if he's Big God, you and I must be Little God. He didn't make us a little lower than the angels. He made us a little lower than himself, than Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because that's who he was talking to when he said, let us make man in our image. He didn't say, let us make man in the image of Michael or Gabriel. He said, let us make man in our yeah. image. But many times we have a problem with recognizing and realizing and accepting the fact that we've been made in the image of God. Psalms 8. Psalms 8. Hallelujah. Let's go down to verse number four. Psalms 8. Let's look at verse four. Let's start at verse four. Reads like this. King James. It says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? Now, David is talking with God. And he's asking God a question about what is man? Why do you care so much about man? Why is man on your mind? And he said, even his children that you visited them, he cared for your children, he cared for you. Why? Because we're made in his image. Now verse 5 says, for thou, talking about God, has made him a little lord than the angel. I think the original says, thou has made him a little lord than Elohim. Who is Elohim? He is the creator. But some people couldn't wrap around their minds that God created us a little lower than him. He gave us dominion on this earth, not angels. Angels can't come on this earth unless they come in the image of a human being. Jesus couldn't come on this earth unless he came in the image of a human being. The Holy Ghost 
can't come on this earth unless he's on the inside and on a human being. So this is why it's important for us to understand who we are and whose we are and develop the right mindset, the right mentality so you can function to the perfection of which God called you to so that you can rule and reign like God called you to. And look at what it says. And the, the rest are five. And have crowned him with glory and honor. You were made to shine. You were made beautifully. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. But if your mindset keeps telling you that you're ugly because you keep looking at the wrong images, you're going to always think the wrong thing about you versus what the word says. See, the magazine didn't make you. See, because when you're looking at them magazines, what you see on them covers is fake. Why? Because they don't took what was natural and they don't airbrushed it. Come on, you know some of them women that had three, four kids, they got stretch marks all over, but you see them in that little two-piece bikini, everything is so perfect, the skin is all perfect. That's not real. And we know what cameras and lights do. It enhances. So they got you thinking the wrong way, but now you need to renew your mind and recognize, baby, you're beautiful because you're made in the image of Almighty God. Yeah. Yes. God loves you. God make you shine. Look at what else it says. Let's go to verse 6. It says, Thou madest him to have dominion. Uh-oh. What does that mean? God made you to have dominion. Does that mean God put you in charge of something? Does that mean God put you on top? You're supposed to be in charge. You're supposed to be commanding and directing. Look at what it says. It goes on to say, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and thou hast put all things under yeah. his feet. Wait a minute. You mean these same feet that I'm looking at that are so beautiful because I'm preaching the gospel. God has put all things under my feet, under your feet. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He made you to be in charge. He made you to rule and to dominate. He said, all sheep and oxen, and yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever pass through the paths of the sea. God gave us dominion over everything but people. He gave us dominion over everything but people. Your current situation, you have dominion over. Sickness and disease, you have dominion over. Poverty, you have dominion over. Spiritual wickedness in high places, you got dominion over. Principalities of power and rule of the darkness of this world, you got dominion over. You just got to renew your mind and take your place. In the kingdom of Almighty God. But if you don't get in God and allow God's presence to fill you up, you won't operate in your dominion. You will always struggle because you don't put God first. God still loves you, but God gave you kingdom dominion. He gave you ability and authority and might and power. And too many of us, children of the Most High God, too many of us are just settling. We're just settling. We are content with complaining about not having enough. We are content with being equal with the status quo. We are content and just being content. We say we want better, but are you willing to do anything to get better, to do better, to be better? Because the only way we're going to get there is there's got to be a change. It's got to be a change. Go with me to Jeremiah 29. I'm, I'm hitting what I believe are familiar scriptures today as the Lord directed me. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, 29. Y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm going to verse 11. 
Because that's where we got to go. And the children of Israel and Jeremiah, they're in captivity. And the Lord is telling them that he's going to visit them. And he's going to do what he said he's going to do. So let's start at verse 10. He says, For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Look at what God spoke to Jeremiah to tell the children of Israel. And I believe he's speaking the same thing to, to me to tell you this morning. I want to read that same passage of scripture from the message Bible. And it says, this is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. This is verse 11. I, I love this. God says this. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Now you see that. God says, he know what he do. You do your part, God already got it planned out. But if you don't renew your mind to find out what God has for you, you're going to keep going through the same thing, getting the same results, expecting something different. Insanity. If I say I want to get out of debt, but every time I get paid, I'm looking for a sale. Or else I'm taking my money and doing something else instead of paying my bills. I haven't expected in. I'm going to stay in debt. But when I get serious and I buckle down and I start saying I'm coming out of debt because God don't want me to be in debt. Jesus paid the price for all my debts. But I got to do something in the natural so God can put a super on it yeah. when it comes to getting out of debt. See, I can't keep spending and spending. I got to do something different. I got to change the way I think. I got to change my outlook. I got to renew my mind concerning my money, my paycheck, my financial future. Because when I start doing it, I start moving. Now God will start moving. But as long as I keep doing the same thing, Yes, I'm praying about it. Yes, I'm confessing about it. But until I renew my mind and get a kingdom mindset, because God's kingdom owes no man nothing, no spiritual being nothing. Ain't no finances on heaven. Ain't no mortgage on heaven. When Jesus rode in on that coat, that coat was paid for. It was paid in full. But you have to renew your mind. Then God tells him, not only say he said, I know what I'm doing, he has it all planned out. God got it all planned out. We know Proverbs 3 tells us, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. Our way of doing things most of the time is messed up. We end up right back to where we started. But when we acknowledge God and we trust God and we let God direct our path, we end up in joy, victory, and peace. We sleep better. We feel better. We talk better. Our attitude is better. Why? Because God made us so God knows everything about us. He knows what the end result is. And I'm not talking about death. He know what he has for us. Just like with this coronavirus. God know when it's going to end. He knows. We just have to, we have to walk our part out. We have to do what we can do so that we can keep ourselves safe. 
But if you got the attitude like the world, you just couldn't wait, so you out there in it. I was just looking at uh, uh, yesterday, uh, last night actually, I, I was looking at a thing um, on the Palm Beach Post talking about how Palm Beach County has added 350 plus new cases in two days. You got to be wise in what you're doing. You got to be wise. You know, God didn't have all these people set up in place when this virus came to be up here just talking. <clears throat> CDC guidelines, God had them set in place so that we can live and not die. But there's many, you too much, you're tired, you don't have no patience. And that's another thing you're going to have to have when it comes to a kingdom mindset. You got to have patience. Because it's not going to happen in your time. It's going to happen in God's time. It's going to happen when God says it's going to happen. And there ain't nothing you or I could do about it but just be patient and just wait on the Lord and let God do what God do because what? There is an appointed time. Come on, y'all. Let's go to some familiar scriptures. Let's go to Ephesians 3. I mean, Ecclesiastes 3. I'll get back to my notes sometime. But Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And you know, this is familiar too. It's familiar. Y'all know when we mainly hear this in the black church. Ecclesiastes 3, and it reads like this, starting in verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. There's a time, an appointed time, a season and a purpose to everything in your life. A time to be born and a time to die. Now we've been born. We've been born. But I'm going to talk about this from another sense. There's a time to die to the old ways the old hell you've been going through, the old hell you've been putting people through, and it's time to give birth to something new. It's time to give birth to God's way of doing things and let God speak to you and talk to you. Let God raise you up according to the word of God. He said a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. You got seed in the ground. There's a time coming when that seed will grow up and when it's time to harvest that seed. Whatever the seed is, spiritual or natural, you got seed in the ground. And there's coming a time to when that seed is going to grow up and you got to pluck it up. You tired of being a hellish person? Well, it's time to pluck up that plant of hell and it's time to give rise to a life of peace. He said, a time to kill and a time to heal. Mm. This country needs a lot of healing. Always. There's enough killing going on. It's time for healing. A time to break down and a time to build up. See, God know what time it is. God know the seasons. God know everything. God already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. So why even worry about tomorrow? Just take care of today like Jesus said. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Sounds like to me, there's a time to everything in our lives. There is a time. You have to come to the place to where you do what? To where you stop crying and you start laughing. To where you stop mourning and you start dancing. But that comes with what? A renewal of the mind. We can't change nothing that happened prior to this moment. But we can affect what will happen in the next moments. Our attitudes, our mindsets, our outlook. We can affect that. He said, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones away. 
or time to embrace and or time to refrain from embracing. Let me go back to this time to cast stones. There's a time to speak and there's a time to be quiet. Huh? And it's going to say that a little bit later. But it's a time for you to pick up certain stones and a time to put other stones down. If you're sick in your body, you need to get the stones of healing. You need to put that in you. You need to get stones where you're praying for your family constantly. To where God, until God show you the breakthrough, and then you ain't got to say them prayers no more. But there's a time for everything. He said a time to get and a time to lose. Ooh. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. As a king, because you are a king according to God, because you're made in his image. There are some things we got to let go. We don't want to. You've been, you've, you've been promoted. And with your promotion, there are certain expectations and certain things you don't do no more. See, a soldier on the front line is different from a soldier who's in the boardroom, who's playing. Because the one on the front line is fighting. But as he gets promoted, he gets more responsibility. So he may not be out there fighting. Now he may be in the background playing. See, as a king, as a king's kid, you're learning how to do what? Rule your kingdom. So you got to know what to do when God speaks to you and do what he's telling you to do. He goes on to say, a time to keep and a time to cast, a time to rend or tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. This is one of the most important ones. Children of God, renewing your mind, you should be speaking his word daily. Because there may come a time where you can't speak the word. But because you've been speaking the word over you so much, that word is still speaking on your behalf. The, the Holy Spirit is now making intercessions for you like he's doing always. But you got to recognize the time. You got to recognize the season. See, just like David, when David got messed up, what did the Bible say? It was a time for kings to be with and war. But where was David? He was at home chilling. And then he's looking down at Bathsheba watching her take a bath. Had he been at war, he would have never been caught up. But what's done is done. And then it says, a time to love and a time to hate. Now, he's not talking about a time to hate people. A time to hate those things which go against God and his word, his will. We always will be loving. But we hate injustice. We hate sin. But we never hate people. See, that's a kingdom mindset. Love is a kingdom mindset. Forgiveness is a kingdom mindset. Choosing to be like Jesus is a kingdom mindset. See, it's so easy to get mad and upset and to take sides. But the bigger thing to do is to have a kingdom mindset and say, I'm going to be like Jesus. This is my time. This is my season to shine. I'm gonna, I am going to let the love of God come out of me. You got to have a kingdom mindset. He said a time of war and a time of peace. Do you have peace within you? Do you have peace around you? When you go home, when you're at your home, your house, wherever you live, is it peaceful? Or, or is it causing you chaos on the inside? God can't move until you do something about it. 
But you have to choose to walk and be just like Jesus. You have to say, you know what? I'm going to do what God say do. I'm going to be just like Jesus. I'm going to have the same mind in me that Christ had in him. And Christ had the mind of the Father to do the Father's will in everything that he does. Christ didn't seek to get the glory because why? He said, why, why you call me good? There's none good but who? The Father. After he fed and healed, delivered, he rebuked. Yet and still, with all the power and all the glory, all the people that looked up to him, all the people wanting to touch him, he still said, hey, uh -uh, don't get this twisted. Without God, my father, I am nothing. And that's what we have to have. That's what our mindset has to be. See, I recognize without God, I can't do this today. I can't be here today. I need God. But you got to have a kingdom mindset. Let me close out with 2 Peter. I mean, 1 Peter, the second chapter. Go with me to 1 Peter, second chapter. 1 Peter. Second chapter. Did I write down the wrong scripture? Oh, no, I'm in the wrong book. First Peter 2, let's look at verse 9. And this is talking before then, it's talking about Christ. You in Christ, you're in the chief cornerstone, you're not, hey, that, that stone will make you stumble. But look at what Peter is writing right here. Verse 9, he says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous, marvelous light. Verse 10, Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not all attained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Look at what he's saying right here. You are a chosen people. You're a chosen generation. God chose you. You are a royal priesthood. You are royalty. You are special. You are unique. You are different. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. Why? Because of God on the inside of you and God upon you. Because this word that you use that offend people for his sake, you are different. You no longer walk in darkness. You're walking in king's dominion. You have a kingdom mindset. You just need to stay in the word. You just need to continue to allow your faith to be built up according to the word of God. You can take this scripture, write it down, write it as a reminder of who you are. Wait a minute. Pastor said, Genesis 1, 26, God created me in his image. Now he's telling me in Second in 1 Peter 2 that I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a chosen people unto God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are special to God. You are unique. You are royalty. You are a king and you have a dominion. You have authority. But you got to recognize who you are and whose you are. And when you begin to do that, when you begin to spend time, now the devil gets mad, the devil gets nervous. Because why? That sleeping lion, that sleeping giant, that warrior according to Almighty God has now awakened. And the devil said, uh oh, I'm in trouble now. He got a different mindset. She got a different mindset. 
Hallelujah. The devil got scared as soon as you woke up and stretched and said, thank you, Jesus. And your feet then hit the floor because you letting the devil know this is who I am. I give praises to God. I know who I am in Christ. I know what God said to me. I know who God says I am. I will be what God says I can be. I will do what God says I can do. I will go where God says I can go. I will have what God says I can have. I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy notion. I am a chosen people. And devil, you better watch out because I'm on the path now because why? My mindset has been renewed according to the word of God and I declare right now I'm taking back my authority. I'm taking back my house. I'm taking back my family and I'm standing on the word of God and I'm ready to fight devil it's on now you picked the wrong king to mess with today Satan you picked the wrong one to come at hallelujah and I got every stone I need right here Satan I can start a gen at, at the beginning of Genesis and I go to the end called Revelation and I have revelation knowledge that God is for me so who can be against me? I have revelation knowledge that his word, hallelujah is a light and lap unto my feet, unto my path. I know at the end of my story I will walk in victory. I am victorious and you can't do nothing to me devil. Why? Because my mind is fixed. It stayed on Jesus. And Satan, I don't care what happens. You will never ever get me to, to deny my God. Why? Because I'm a king's king. He's big G. I'm little G. And Satan, I want you to know today that every child of God is rising up who's watching this broadcast, they will be who God said they can be. They will have what God said they have. They walk in victory. They will not be stopped. They will not be denied. They're king's kid in the name of Jesus. And I declare that they have received the power of the Holy Ghost. He's on the inside of them. He's upon them. They've been baptized with water and with fire baptism of the Holy Spirit. They speak hallelujah and it has happened. Mountains are moving right now. Hallelujah. Demons and devils are trembling at the name of Jesus right now. They're calling on Almighty God and he's already done it in the name of Jesus. Let's give God some praise this morning. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something, child of God. Don't let nobody, don't let nothing, don't let a circumstance or a situation change what God has said about you. Recognize who you are. Recognize if you don't meditate on nothing else but Genesis 1:26 and 27, and then you go to set first Peter 2, verse number 9 and 10. You go to Psalms 8, go to Psalms 82 and 6, and you meditate on that every day until your mind is renewed according to this word to recognize who you are. Hallelujah. You're not a thug or a thot. You're a child of the Most High God. You're not dumb or you're stupid. You're made in the image of God. You are an intelligent being. You are the most powerful being in the world, in the universe. Don't let nothing, hallelujah, stop you from being who God says you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell me God don't have a plan for your life. We went to Jeremiah 29. God has a plan for your life. You just have to recognize who you are. Recognize who you are. Whatever your first name is, put King's Kid in front of it. Put royalty in front of it. Put chosen in front of your name. Put Elohim, El Shaddai. Put, I'm a child of the Most High God in front of your first name. So you recognize who you are. And you let the devil recognize who you are. Because you are royalty. You're special. You're unique. You are amazing. You are marvelous. You are wonderful. You're a child of God. Amen. Bow your heads. Let's close out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We lift you up. We give you glory and honor. We esteem you high. We thank you, Lord. 
Father, I pray right now that your word did not fall on deaf ears, but God, that someone will raise up. We all will raise up and assume our rightful position on this earth as king's kids, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, as chosen generation, holy people, royalty, royal priesthood. We won't be afraid, God. We won't deny the gospel because your gospel won't deny us. We won't be afraid to speak your word at the appointed time, at the appointed hour. Father God, I declare your children walk with a renewed mindset, with a kingdom mindset, with new might, new power, new ability. Father, thank you for doing a new thing in our lives this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Jaquay to come sing us a song, and then after that, I'm going to come back and close out. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank him. We just praise him this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. In one place, in one tabernacle, with Jesus. In one place, in one tabernacle, with Jesus. There is no other place. Where I rather be than in one place, in one tabernacle with him, in one place, in one tabernacle with Jesus. In one place, in one tabernacle with Jesus, there is no In one tabernacle with him, I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because I choose to be. I'm here because I love to be in your presence. I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because I choose to be. I'm here because I love to be in your presence. I find peace here. I find joy here. All I need is here in your presence. I find peace here. I find joy here. All I need is here in your presence. I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because I choose to be. 
I'm here because I'd love to be in your presence. I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because I choose to be. I'm here because I love to be in your presence. I find peace here. I find joy here. All I need is here in your presence. I find peace here. I find joy here. All I need is here in your presence. I'm here because I love to be in your presence. Praise the Lord. I find peace here, joy here, love here in his presence. Say this after me. Say, Father, Father I, believe in my heart I believe in my heart that your son Jesus, that your son Jesus died for me, died for me. And, that he rose and that he rose on the third day. The third day. His, blood his blood was shed, was shed for the forgiveness of of my, of my sin, and I receive, and I receive my, new my new life in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Well, hey, I want to thank y'all for joining us today, and I want you to know that I love you. I'm proud of you. I just want you to embrace who you are and what God has for you this week. Take it one day at a time. Don't, don't try to rush it. Take it one day at a time. Accept who you are and whose you are and be who God says you are. So let me just say a closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we give you honor and glory, we esteem you high. Father God, I thank you for your children, Father, who came and worshiped with us, fellowship with us this morning. Father God, for you have given them everything that pertains unto life and godliness and perfected that which concerns them and made every crooked place in their life straight. Now, God, I, go, I pray that as they step out on faith, that you increase as they decrease. Have your way with us, Lord. Let our light, our lives be light for others to follow. Let them see Jesus in us and upon us and not we ourselves. Father God, I thank you for the power that you have employed in us through the Holy Spirit. We receive power on the inside and the outside because of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, don't forget... Tomorrow morning, 7.15 a.m., this channel, I'll be praying uh, at 7.15, Tuesday night at 7 p.m., uh, Wednesday, uh, Brain Change, Friday morning again at 7 p.m., and next Saturday, first Sunday, I'll be back praying again at 9 a.m. I'll put it all up later on the schedule, but hey, know that you are special, you are unique, you are powerful, and hey, go and have a a blessed week in the name of the Lord. So on behalf of myself, Pastor James, my wife, Pastor Sabrina, our family, our church family, Peniel Covenant Christian Center, have a wonderful day and God bless you until we meet again. Peace.